What is up, my fellow engineers? Let's talk about alpha lipoic acid on testosterone, different forms, how effective, fertility, all of those kind of good stuff. Let's dive in. All right, so alpha lipoic acid is also known as thiocytic acid or 6,8-dithiooctanoic acid. It is a sulfur containing molecule derived from octanoic acid, specific caprylic acid. So caprylic acid is actually a fatty acid. And you can see these sulfur molecules. So it's a sulfurous compound. And then it can be converted into dihydroalpha lipoic acid. And then it's recycled back and over and over in the body. But what it does, lipoic acid was discovered to function as a cofactor for metabolic enzymes within the dehydrogenase family including alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase and pyruvate dehydrogenase. This is pyruvate dehydrogenase up here. So when you burn, you break down glucose in the body, you break it down all the way into pyruvate. And then pyruvate dehydrogenase is a rate-limited enzyme to convert it into acetyl coenzyme A to be used in the Krebs cycle to produce energy. So it's extremely important there as a cofactor. The other one is this alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, which converts alpha-ketoglutarate into succinyl coenzyme A. So you need it for proper function of the electron transport chain. So this means that alpha lipoic acid can be very good for increasing energy production or at least normalizing energy production. So what it does, additional enzymes subject to lipolation comprise branch chain ketoacid dehydrogenase, ketoadipate dehydrogenase, and the glycine cleavage system, and the latter being regulating glycine concentration within the body. All of these are involved in a protein or amino acid metabolism into acetyl coenzyme A, like isoleucine and leucine, which is converted to acetyl coenzyme A. So if you have low levels of uh, alpha lipoic acid, you might struggle to break down and metabolize your amino acids properly. So clearly it's very important. So here are a few mechanisms of how it can increase your testosterone. It increases nitric oxide, which improves the blood flow to the testis. If you don't get enough blood flow nutrients, you can't properly produce testosterone. It is an antioxidant and it increases antioxidant defense enzymes. It quenches free radicals. It increases luteinizing hormone and it ensures optimal energy production in the testis. All right, so how can it increase testosterone? Alpha lipoic acid acid has been shown to modulate slash normalize the activity of 3-beta-HSD, 17-beta-HSD, type 3, and STAR. The type 3 is the one that converts your androstene dione into testosterone. And the 3-beta-HSD is the one that converts pregnenolone into progesterone. And STAR is the enzyme that transports cholesterol into the mitochondria to be converted into pregnenolone. It's a rate-limited enzyme in stereogenesis. So alpha lipoic acid ensures that all of these processes work properly for you to produce testosterone. So here's alpha lipoic acid and testosterone. So this is a human study. They infused intravenously 600 milligrams of alpha lipoic acid for seven days. And then they use 600 milligrams of oral alpha lipoic acid daily for 12 weeks or 50 milligrams of transdermal testosterone. The H HbA1c went down a little bit, cholesterol went down slightly, triglycerides went down slightly, testosterone went up very slightly by about 10 points. This was after three months of using alpha lipoic acid. And then SHBG also went up very slightly. So clearly based on this results, alpha lipoic acid is not very good at increasing testosterone. Then they, have, then they also looked at sexual function and this was in comparison to testosterone. So erectile dysfunction improved from a 15 to an 18 on the, this is IIEF, which is a sexual questionnaire. So it ranks out of 25. So 15 out of 25 is not bad. It's not like horrible. It's like a moderate to mild erectile dysfunction or sexual dysfunction going up to 18. is still not great, but it's a decent increase. Orgasmic function slightly increased. Sexual desire slightly increased, but I think this is really insignificant. Intercourse satisfaction went up a little bit, but I think this is really insignificant. And then overall satisfaction also went up a little bit. But it's so, it, these changes are so low and so small, I don't think it's really like worth using alpha lipoic acid for sexual function. And this was alpha lipoic acid versus testosterone. So testosterone was this light gray column, and alpha lipoic acid was the dark gray column. Interestingly, in terms of rectal function, alpha lipoic acid was more beneficial at improving erectile function than testosterone. Also increasing orgasmic function compared to testosterone. But testosterone was the best at enhancing sexual desire. So it seems to be a lot more dopaminergic. Testosterone is very dopaminergic compared to alpha lipoic acid, not very dopaminergic. Intercourse satisfaction went up the most with testosterone, which is interesting. And then overall satisfaction 
went up the most with the alpha lipoic acid so it's really interesting that they did like a comparison study and where alpha lipoic acid was slightly better than testosterone but in some cases testosterone was also better so this is why i'm always saying if you don't fix the root cause and you're just going on trt it's most likely not going to solve the issues that you're looking for you have to focus on optimizing your overall health and I'm not saying you have to use alpha lipoic acid to get the job done, but this is just a representation that if you're missing in something like alpha lipoic acid, using testosterone is not really going to solve the issue. All right, then we have two forms of alpha lipoic acid. We have the R and the S, and they're basically just mirror images. So they look identical, they're just mirror images. And this is why R is better than the S version. For alpha lipoic acid, it's generally accepted that the R version is more biologically active than the S version because then it is naturally occurring in nature, in food and whatnot. Pyruvate decarboxylation is an important step in the metabolic pathway of glycolysis and the TCA cycle, the Krebs cycle as I discussed earlier. In the pyruvate decarboxylation reaction of intact cells, it is not inhibited by the R lipoic acid while it's inhibited by S lipoic acid. So this enzyme, the pyruvate decarboxylation is very important also for energy production. And it seems that the S lipoic acid inhibits it, the R doesn't. Now, if you just buy any random lipoic acid on the market, it's probably going to be S, unless they specify that it's R alpha lipoic acid. Then they also gave these animals the S lipoic acid and the R lipoic acid to see which one is the best for reducing inflammation and just overall enhancing health. Right, so they gave these animals oxidized fish oil. And these are Im immunoglobulins that bind to toxins in the body. And the oxidized fish oil sometimes lowered some of these markers versus the lipoic acid increased it with the R lipoic acid being the best. And here are some inflammatory markers like TNF alpha, interleukin 1b, interleukin 6, interferon gamma. And again, you can see that the R lipoic acid is the best in most of these cases at reducing inflammation in the body. And here you can see progesterone. Oxidized fish oil reduced sterogenesis, progesterone and estradiol, but this was female animals and they need the estrogen. So the, the R lipoic acid was the best at increasing progesterone, but not that good at increasing estrogen, which is good because you want to be more in a progesterone dominant state. You don't want, don't want to be in an estrogen dominant state. Then they also looked at antioxidant defense enzymes like superoxide dismutase. And some of these enzymes, they just, just they quench free radicals. And again, you can see that the R lipoic acid was the best at enhancing these antioxidant defense enzymes. And MDA, which is a marker of oxidative stress, was the lowest with R lipoic acid. So you can clearly see that the R alpha lipoic acid is much better than S lipoic acid. So if you want to get something, you want to make sure it's the proper one, which is the R alpha lipoic acid. Alpha lipoic acid on neurotransmitters. Alpha lipoic acid has been reported to cause upregulation of the NMDA receptor in addition to blockage of the dopamine receptor. So it strengthens antipsychotic medication and it restores dopamine and serotonin that are low due to chronic stress. So this upregulation of the NMDA receptor can actually be really helpful for motivation and focus, but also libido, which is interesting to me because in the previous study it showed that it didn't help with libido. But I saw a couple of anecdotes on Reddit. People say that it was really helpful for increasing their libido. So maybe in cases where people do not have high levels of NMDA, NMDA receptor um, expression, alpha lipoic acid can be good to enhance libido for these individuals. Maybe a good starting dose would be 600 milligrams twice or thrice a day. Foods high in alpha lipoic acid plants, you have spinach, broccoli, and tomato. So clearly spinach is the dancer source. And then in animal sources, we have kidney, heart, and liver. So if you want to get um, a lot of alpha lipoic acid from food, animal foods, which is going to be my preference, because you can eat a lot more heart than you can eat spinach. A lot of people would eat maybe like 20 grams of spinach per day, but you can easily eat like a pound of heart per day. Right? So you can easily get a lot more alpha lipoic acid from organ meat than you would from vegetable brews. All right. So there you have it. Alpha lipoic acid is not really good at increasing your hormones, but it might be helpful for enhancing erectile function if that is something that you are after. Is that the go-to thing that I would use for erectile function? Probably not, but it, it's still a decent option. It's okay. It's better than testosterone, but it's not going to be my go-to option for that. So if you want to maximize your testosterone and erectile function, I have courses on that in the Tesla tribe. And if you join, I will give you a personalization call so I can help dial in your protocol to get the best results possible. Link to join is in the description below. All right, guys, I hope you learned something new and I will check you in the next one. Cheers, guys.